Okay, so in this uh, third circular uh, motion review question, of the coin sitting on a phonograph turned in by like a record player, it's a 25 round coin, which uh, this is actually not going to end up mattering. Um, and we're trying to, it's 13 centimeters from the turntable axis, what's the maximum angular speed of the turntable, such that the coin does not slip, the coefficient of static friction between the coin and the turntable is 0.2. So, um, maybe it's worthwhile to sort of maybe, maybe I'll use the space over here, so we can just to sketch, so this is the record player, and this maybe if it's rotating axis, so sort of a side angle view, and then we've got this coin, sitting on the uh, table. So if you draw a free by diagram for a coin, and there is a weight force on the coin by the earth, and there is a normal force on the coin by the table, but we know that there has to be, in order for the coin to be rotating, there needs to be a force toward the center, um, and that force toward the center, and since there's no the only thing that could exert a horizontal force on the coin is the turntable itself. And it has to constantly point toward the center. So this particular force is a friction force that's on the coin by the turntable. And that's a static friction force. There's no, assuming the coin is not slipping, there's no relative motion between the coin and the turntable. So this is why it's a static friction force. So we're looking for the relative motion, and there's no relative motion between the coin and the turntable. But, you know, the coin is moving relative to the you know, lab frame or the room where it's not moving relative to the turntable. So we're looking at this static friction force being the force that causes this motion, the circular motion. So this will lead to the centripetal acceleration of the coin. And we're looking for the maximum, uh, the maximum angular speed will refer to the maximum static friction before it starts to slip. Um, and we're looking for the angular speed, so that's omega. So we ideally what we want to do is describe the centripetal acceleration in terms of omega. So we want the so the FCP in this example will be the friction force that's on the coin by the turntable, and that will be the mass times ACP. So this friction force that's on the coin, I'm looking for the maximum, so this will be mu s n. And I would like to describe ACP in terms of omega, so it's equivalent to omega squared times R. Again, you can look up those definitions about how you can transfer ACP from V squared over R to then 2 pi over T all to be squared, or 2 pi F all to be squared, and this is where the omega squared comes in times R, so this is where the, and we're looking for omega. So then the normal in this case, there's no acceleration of the coin perpendicular to the turntable, so these two would be equal in magnitude, so I can say that mu s m g equals m omega squared r, and this is where I stated earlier why the mass uh, cancels, so we don't actually need the mass of the coin, and we're trying to solve for uh, omega. So omega squared would be equal to mu s g divided by r, so omega will be equal to the square root of mu s g divided by r. So in this example we do have mu s. We have the r, but the r needs to be converted to um, two meters. And I believe, let's check my calculations here. If you solve for this, where r is equal to 0 0.13 meters, Omega is equivalent to 3.88 radians per second, but that's not in the units that we need and uh, that these choices are given in. So to get this omega into RPM, we want to find out in a sense that how much, what is 3.88 of a revolution. So there are two pi radians in a revolution. So I want to do 3.88 divided by two pi. So it would tell me how many radians this radians is of a full revolution. And this is happening per second, so then I want to multiply by 60 to figure out how many of these how many of these revolutions happen per minute. And this should give you 37 RPMs. Which is yeah, in this case choice C.